All right, welcome to the first version of how to fill out an iOS or an iPad or iPod educational app review for class. Let's go ahead and get started with the first obvious one is app title. Here again, you want to be specific. If there's no spaces, don't put spaces. Um, some things, especially here's a good example, flashcards. There's so many with the words flashcards. Sometimes they have space, sometimes they don't. Next, the developer. If it's hard to find the site, sometimes they're not categorized correctly. It's hard to search for it. Having the developer is also a good thing. The next section, cost. Um, note the cost. If it is free, please note if it's a light version or if it's a version that's going to require in-app purchases to make it solid. Um, that's really hard in education, so you want to stay away from in-app purchases. Um, or maybe it's just really free. There's other instances like you have to have a subscription to a service and this is just the app that runs that service. Um, but you'll want to be aware of, of what free really means. The next section that I want you to fill out has to do with where is the educational focus. So the first one is what's the primary content area? So general, is it math, science, social studies? Um, the next section, I want the standard or objective. It just depends on if you're a classroom teacher or if you work with, with job goals. Um, where does that stand? What need does this fill in your curriculum? The next section, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the difference because to me this is really important. And I've kind of narrowed down, at least for educational purposes, there are three main types that I look at. The first type of app that I want to talk about is, is one that there are many, many of them out there. Okay, This is skill practice. This is practice after the kids have been taught the information. So it could be for math facts. They could be practicing, recognizing their shapes, vocabulary words. Anything that allows them to hone their skills is a skill practice app. Okay, Those are really good for contests, by the way. The next type of app is curriculum. Here, I like to compare it to the old traditional textbook. So what I'm looking for is anything that's going to replace what I used to have to do with textbooks or other information sources. Here you're talking any of the ebooks that are out there like the CK12, even the frog dissection out there, that's curriculum. There's one where it teaches the kids how to do circuit boards, that's all curriculum. Any tutorials in there and videos, those are all curriculum. When I'm thinking UDL, I think of the recognition here. You're really looking for different ways to give the same information. You're combining multimedia to create that dynamic effect. All right, I could talk forever on that section. Let's go on to tools, though. These are kind of everything else, things that help you be more productive, more organized, to become a better student and, and study the information you need to learn. Now, you will find that there are some apps that do combine the different types of apps. For instance, I think of that frog dissection. It not only teaches them the information, it also then allows them to practice the skill of working with that information. All right, next section, levels. Here I just kind of stayed general. If it's more than one, if it applies to all, go ahead and put that in. Or if it's not there, I put another. The next section is that UDL checklist. We talked a lot about that in the first lesson for Module 4. And so I'm just going to briefly go over this we're going to be looking for these different guidelines that are present in an app to judge whether or not it has educational value. First, does it provide multiple means of representations? Again, this is the what. This is where I really look for, does it unlock everything to all learners? So does it have, it, does it have text? Does it have audio? Is the text unlocked? Does it provide um, video? Uh, it doesn't have to have everything, but it does need to have some to make it a tool that goes above the textbook for me. The next section is provides multiple means of action and expression. Okay, This is the how of learning. How are kids going to practice what they've learned and how are they going to express back to you what they've learned? And also what types of supports and scaffolding? Here I think of the hints that are supplied by many of the different apps and how it will blink to them or it may also change their level automatically and also monitor their progress. 
the last section provides multiple means of engagement okay now remember this wasn't built for the iPad but I'll tell you it might as well have been because the iPad is engagement all over the place but what you want to look for is is how does it keep their interest or does the interest phase out does it continue to challenge the students and does it also provide the support when they need it okay it also has to be relevant the other thing here is it has to give ongoing relevant feedback which again the iPad is just built for so be looking for that how does it help the student if they get it wrong also options for self-regulation. In other words, it helps students be self-driven, motivated, and organized. Here I think about all the hyperlinks and all the hidden little treasures of information that many of the, the educational apps have that just by tapping on it, it gives them more information. It puts the learner in charge of their own learning. So I really love this piece of UDL and how it fits with the iPad. All right, the last section is after you've gone through the review, you've played with the app a little bit, I just want your overall review on it. So first give it a one to five star ranking, just like in iTunes. And then I want kind of a brief written review, notes that you want to take. Use this as your notepad if you're taking notes on the app. I find it helpful when I'm doing an app review that I have my iPad in front of me and then this app review form on my computer so I can fill it out as I go. And as always, don't forget to click the submit button when you're done. All right, thank you for joining me and, and happy app reviewing.